So this is going to be another interesting, interesting video about the moon and the sun. And um, yeah, more, yeah. more this moon time, questions. Though, this, yeah, <laughs> more questions than answers. Right. This time, though, we're not going to rely on other footage. We're not going to rely, even though you're seeing other footage throughout this video as we voice it over. But you bought one of those cool Nikon P nine hundred. Yes, indeed. Oh, really cool with the eighty three X zoom and. People are pretty familiar with getting moon and sun photography and zooming in with video. And yeah, this is where it raises more questions and answers than yeah. ever before. Yeah. So we'll just talk about maybe three three topics here. Uh, the first couple we've gone over before and the third one I'd like to address for the first time on our channels. So first of all, I shot this video here that you're looking at on March 8th. It was a Wednesday afternoon, about 520 or so uh, East Coast time. And it's about an hour and a half before sundown. Sun's low in the sky. And you can see from the shadows in the video where I'm shooting, the moon, the bottom left side is not lit, right? But you can clearly see by turning around where the sun's position is in the sky that it should, it should definitely be lit. Why is that not lit? And I still have yet from six months ago when I posted a similar video, I still have yet to find a, a good that, explanation. That's one of the first ones I put up is when we were in the parking lot looking up yeah. and it was just an odd angle. The sun was the sun was actually on the same side as the shadow of the moon. It was like it was like the bottom right hand side. Right. But the sun was over to the right. Right. The sun should clearly if 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 my should eyeballs be. can look up and see that shadowed part of the moon, the sun is right by me. It could see it too. It should have been able to be lit, and it's not. So that's kind of like, you know, a repeat of what other people have been posting lately. But the second thing I want to talk about is I still have yet to get a great answer as to why the craters on the moon are always the same color as the sky behind it. And what I mean by that is at night, when you look at the moon at night, well, the craters are always uh, uh, shades of black, right? Gray, yeah. black, uh, lighter or darker, so to speak. And in the daytime, on a blue sky, they're blue. Now, if the, if the moon is actually out of our atmosphere, as science tells us, 238,000 miles away, why would the color of our atmosphere, the color of our sky, have anything to do with the craters on the moon? Uh, what, what do you attribute that to? Uh, you know, there's people that, there's people with, with the way out theory, at least I think it is, that say it's a hologram. Yeah, that it's not even, it's not even actually a, a physical thing. It's like a, it's like a, it's a satellite. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you talk about the, uh, what's his name? Oh, God, the David Ikes yeah. of the world. Yeah. yeah. I, but I thought, hey, there's people that thought 9-11 being an inside job was a crazy yeah. theory yeah. years ago. I'm just looking at this, and it is quite clear. And we're looking we're looking out the window right now. I'm sure we can see the moon the same way. It looks very transparent, translucent. Yeah. It looks like taking a, a half- opaque object and putting it over something like in other well, words you could see through it yes like i am convinced that if the sky were red that the craters on the moon would be red whatever color you place this moon on top of those craters become that color what's your what's your theory on that i don't know i mean of course that implies transparency what's your guess i mean what would you that's how out there it's it's it, it's well, the fun thing about the we're moon, looking at it and we're trying to figure it out as we're looking at it. I, you know, I think that the, the, the most encouraging part about all of this is trying to discover this stuff. And I mean that in all seriousness, I'm not trying to be cheesy, but man, I have learned so much in the last year or so researching this stuff. I don't know what my guess is yet, but I'm uh, I'm really enjoying the 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 path or I should say the journey to trying to find out. I don't know, man. Is it flat? Is it round? Is it? transparent is it oh that's a, a the disc? other thing is it a disc yeah, yeah is it a flat disc i don't know i really don't know man but this right here the color issue still bothers me and that does in fact imply transparency but the third thing and i think i saw a guy one of the videos uh, i think flat earth asshole or somebody brought this up that's a good name yeah right <laughs> um about the craters on the moon so he brings up a point about the fact that, that wait a second the craters are all perfect circles Every crater on the moon, when you zoom in, they're all perfect circles. Why is it that you don't see any trenches? Because a perfect circle would mean that the meteorite or the asteroid that hit it had to come from a 90-degree angle straight down, boop, to make the crater, right? There's no trenches. There's no 
Well, also, if you look at that, it's a perfectly round object as well. Wouldn't any skim off the edges? Or... There should be tons. In fact, there should no, be that, more. No, that look like there's there's almost a, a gash. A, exactly, like a, like a crash landing type yes, thing. Yes, yes. And in his video, he actually says, look, he goes out into the sand. He fires a, a BB gun, I think it was, into the sand and shows how from different angles it leaves different types of marks. And he was saying that the only pictures he could find of any meteorites hitting anything and leaving a trench was from Hollywood films, you know, 2012 and things like that. But in reality, even on Earth, all we have is the circular craters. So I get to looking into science's answer, and science says, well, it's because these meteors hit. They hit Earth, and they, they may come in at different angles, certainly. But then when they get to where they're going, there's so much energy that they combust and they blow up, they explode, and leave, what you're seeing is the circular from the explosion, not from the hit. I thought, okay, all right. So like a nuclear bomb. Yeah, like a bomb. Like the nuclear bomb gets dropped and it explodes into the atmosphere and creates the mushroom cloud. Yeah, and then I'm like, wait a second. I thought the moon had little to I just, no I oxygen. I just opened up a whole new can of whatever. Yeah, People have said they don't oh, exist. Nukes, right? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Here we go. But, but then I look it up and I'm like, wait a second. Hold on. If that's your answer... How does something combust on the moon when you don't have the atmosphere and the oxygen in the air? Oh, wow. So how does that happen on the moon? And if your theory is correct on Earth, do you have any? Let's not forget one sixth of gravity. Right. Officially, so it wouldn't draw in the, no, the would, meteorite would... with the same force as our gravity. Correct. And an explosion. Oh, probably... gravity. There we go again. <laughs> Another. Yeah, <right. laughs> but an explosion wouldn't even act the same way. Yeah. We in, keep in bringing up these gravity. different things because people don't believe there's such a thing as people gravity say, as well. Yeah, people are watching going, it's, there's no such thing as gravity. What is it? Uh, density and buoyancy. Uh, yeah. It, it, that's what they say. Essentially density oh, and buoyancy. kind of makes sense too. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I, I tell you, I'm, I'm pretty convinced of that one. But so my, my question is on this crater theory uh, that science puts forth. Can you show us any evidence of this no they can't there are no uh you know recent videos or, or, or uh, of meteors coming in hitting the earth and exploding and leaving a round crater it is simply science's best guess well they would they would say that place in the woods in russia was the last time when all the yes but they didn't they we don't have footage of the impact no itself. it was in the 1910s 1920s i think yeah you know. that's right there's no footage of it there's no uh, there's claims that something came down and boom, whatever, but we don't know that this is the same. I'm just same. saying what, what these stories have said, that, that in their his, their version of history, yes. it did indeed happen before. We just didn't see it. Right, we didn't see it. And and, and that's what they claim, is that all meteor holes are the same thing. The, the, the meteor came down, all of these craters, whether it's moon or earth, the thing came down and then it exploded, left the big ring, but yet this is simply a guess and we are taught as fact, everyone from, from you know age six and up, five and up, are taught that the little holes in the moon are in fact craters. Well, well green we cheese when you're a kid. Yeah, right. Well, I'm looking at all right. Let's let's say the edge of this uh, on the right, and as we're playing it or we're freezing it in our footage, it does look like there was impact coming from because the moon the moon doesn't rotate. That's why we always see the dark side. Correct. That's why we always see that same side, the lit side. The dark side is the side we don't see. Okay. So what direction? This is just my question from observation. It looks like actually on some angles that the meteorites came from Earth yeah. and hit the yeah. moon. No, I'm just saying. Look no, at no, the, a lot of people the, brought that up. It's true. It's, they say, well, wait a second. If, if, it's, if the same side's always facing us, how did these asteroids or these meteors... It should be completely just it bulldozed on one side with yeah. meteorites. We're, yeah, the other side should be pelted, whereas this side should be relatively clean. You know, Or this side should be destroyed. That's what I mean. If it, yeah. if it hits one or the, or the top. Right. But the bottom or the bottom edge, mm -hmm. this is just something I'm looking at right now. Like The direction is coming from underneath to yeah, hit if that. If it's coming from Earth, that makes no sense. Did an asteroid hit us, bounce back? Fight off gravity and head to the moon and hit the moon? No, that I, to me that can't happen. But when you look at other shots of the moon closer up, you can what you see is circular craters everywhere. It's almost like a golf ball, right? And this implies that they came from that direction at 90 degrees. Once again, I asked a question. That it, you know, I see a lot more top, middle, but I also see, once again, on the bottom part of what, you can search, Google it, or we'll bring up this image, 
during the during this voiceover. But once again, I just wonder the bottom half. Another question altogether. Yeah. How does that? And once again, a perfect circle. So it was hit with almost. And what I'm looking at here is mostly all these seem like they were hit with the same exact force, same exact same, size. Right, right, right. Yeah. Same force, same ex- uh, mighty explosion. Uh, there's none, you know, there's not very many that are smaller or larger. They're all relatively the same size. And, um, you know, it just, the more I look into the moon, honestly, there's more questions than answers. What's the David Icke one, and not to quote him again, uh, but it's a quote from someone else that he quoted saying, uh, the moon, it's basically like the moon shouldn't be there. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. who built the moon, I think the book yeah, was. who made the moon or who, who put the moon there. Who yeah. built the moon, I think. Who built the moon? Um, the, it's right. too big to be where it is. It's too close to the earth. It's not. It, there's all these different. God, I, I remembered it, too. There was like the three or four. Acts, the way it behaves, the way it turns, the way it doesn't it turn. It should not be it there. It shouldn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, it defies everything um, that we know. So, I, you know, again, I'm not claiming on here to know anything in particular, but I am claiming that we've got a lot. I still think that there's a whole lot of work to be done when it comes to moon research. Let's say before we even go on this on this uh, video, talk about how close the sun was. We played this video probably yeah. quite a few times, and the sun is yeah. But look at the sun. It's the right sun's there. closer to the moon in this video. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. It's, it's setting, but it, should it really look that close? Man, you know, the more I look at these things, the moon, the sun. There is no way that one is 240,000 miles away and one is 93 million miles away. You know, just looking at the moon, is it really possible for a, for a Nikon camera to get this kind of detail? And people will say, uh, well, it's because you're zooming into something that's 2,000 miles wide. Yeah, I get that. But with this kind of clarity, with this kind of resolution? Wait a minute. Well, shouldn't you be able to shoot Jupiter and Saturn then because they're much wider? Yeah, and people, people have actually <laughs> no, I mean, I mean that's, in, that's way far away, but you understand what I mean. Well, according to mainstream science and that theory, there should be no limit. As long as it's big enough, we can definitely zoom into I'm it. still blown away by the stars and the way they, oh. they, they look, and that's a whole different yeah. video. For, and we might have covered that before, but, man, with the, with the Nikon and shooting that and seeing it look like, you know, like almost like an underwater light. Yeah, I, I, I have no clue yet. I'm still looking into that every night. The, the one thing definitively that I can say for sure, in closing, that I do know, is that Nikon owes Flat Earth a check. 